Hi, my name is Kimmy Gatewood. I'm the director and star of Naval Gazers. And Naval Gazers is about a not so distant future when we've all become so addicted to our phones that uh, our spines start to curve like this. So I play the part of Polly, who's got a dream that there's something more than just her screen. Hi, I'm Matthew Johnson. I am the writer and director of Lessons with Martha, which is uh, a story about a young man's relationship with his grandmother or maybe his, a, a woman's relationship with her grandson over the time uh, from giving piano lessons at when um, his grandson's uh, seven years old to uh, when he's um, a 30 something and coming back and finding that his grandmother is, uh, come, uh, is, is entered a, kind of a dementia state, has Alzheimer's and kind of trying to play across those two states of being a fully realized adult versus being the kind of early childhood slash kind of convalescence um, that kind of the human life can kind of compose. Mm -hmm. You are normally a comedic director and right. this, is, this is your first drama. Mm -hmm. um, how was it trying to shift gears a little bit in that area? Well, um, I think uh, it was definitely a little bit of a challenge. You, when you're a, a comedy director, you're going for the laugh. Um, and when you're a drama director, you know, you could argue you're going for the tears, um, but you don't want to immediately go there. Whereas in, in comedy, the sooner you can get somebody laughing, the better. Um, so there was a little bit of, of sort of working on the pacing that was important. But I would also say this was a personal story that's sort of based on my relationship with my grandmother. So that um, kind of affected it a bit. And I, it, it made, it me, made me want to... Uh, to tell the story, first of all, and kind of as the inspiration for the story. So um, it, 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 no pun intended, it made me take it a little more seriously um, as far as the storytelling. Um, but I would also say that having done it, um, I was something like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm a, I, I'm, I have a lot more fun doing comedy, <laughs> but it would, it felt really good to tell this story and have people respond well to it. Would this be something, you, would you like to try more drama in the future or do you want to, or I think, yeah, I mean, I think I would say there's some personal stories um, that I had kind of shied away from telling um, just from being, you know, in the more comedy space and not feeling that they were necessarily there that I, it gave me a little confidence that I could tell the stories and find a way to tell them um, that kind of distance myself from them and the people are, that might be involved in them, um, but also kind of made me feel that it wasn't, that I wasn't missing out too much. By, by focusing on comedy, I think sometimes as a storyteller, you worry, well, I've kind of boxed myself in or I've really kind of, you know, embraced a certain storytelling space and I, I wish I was in the other one. And it's like, you know what, I, I really enjoy telling comedy stories. Thank you. Uh, Kimmy. Hi. Hi. Um, you have had a film with our festival a few years ago, Control, and it won the top honor and best actor award. And you came back with this film which you actually acted in when you and directed by the way um was it kind of difficult to direct yourself a little bit in this <laughs> you know uh it ended up working well because it was such a physical challenge and i feel like asking another actor to be in this horribly uncomfortable <laughs> position for days at a time i kind of made me put my money where my mouth was a little bit um, I, Devin Doyle, the DP, um, worked on control with me, so we have a very good relationship, and I should say that Matt and I are married, and that we both worked on each other's films, um, Matt's just before the pandemic, and mine in the pandemic, so mine, um, uh, Navel Gazers was not only necessary because we were at the height of the pandemic, but I couldn't control myself, I had to make a film, so it was me and Matt, and then the other people involved, um, you'll see that we shared a cast. Um, Gwen Hillier played both Martha in uh, Lessons with Martha and also my mom. We go to the same um, hairstylist, so it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. With, with that, you shot this during the pandemic. How, at what time during the pandemic? Was it in the fall or earlier? It was September, 2020. Yeah, so it was pretty much uh, in, in the thick of things. We had potted up, luckily, with a, um, an amazing TV writer, Annie Mebin, who co-wrote this with 
me and her husband, Matt Rochelleau, is an actor. So we basically took our little pod and then um, I had uh, my old assistant, Lauren Bancroft, to produce the film, Devin Doyle, and then Natalie Gross, who did the production design. So this was, that was the whole crew, Matt ran sound. I sometimes, it was very lucky actually, when you're looking down, sound works much better. <laughs> so, <laughs> You're very, just very small. Talking person. right into the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very you small. You can have an amateur like me run your sound, and it was okay. <laughs> so you, you actually worked on what, what capacity did you work on the project with with her? So we um, actually Matt Matt ran sound for Naval Gazers and produced it, and I ran sound from Lessons with Martha and produced Lessons with Martha. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then we so, both we both edited our own films, which we're known to do. Yeah. So, so Matthew, uh, Lessons with Martha was shot how long ago? Uh, we, oh, yeah, it was shot, uh, I'm trying to, I guess it was early December of 2019. Um, and I had it all edited and ready to go just in time for everything to lock down. Um, and uh, uh, we, we shot it in one weekend. Uh, it was the house that we shot it in was actually Gwen Hillier, who uh, is the star in my in my film. She uh, lives in Burbank and is a tremendous actress and a longtime collaborator of ours. And she's sort of a den mother to a lot of the New York actor friends that we were sort of part of a, a big professionally. We all sort of moved out here at about the same time. Um, and her daughter is close with us. And her daughter, Sarah Lowe, is in my film and her grandson, Keeler Donnelly, is in uh plays uh, the young Mark in my film. And so it was a, sort of a family affair for all of us. Um, and the nice thing about her house is she's been there for long enough that uh, honestly walking in, it really felt like my grandmother's house. I mean, I had been there before, but I was like, oh, this feels like a grandmother's house. It was very lived in and very kind of um, beautiful. Um, and, and in that way of like, she painted the walls, like, you know, kind of very personal colors, uh, very rich tones, like the, the furniture was from all different periods. And so, there was not a lot of production design that we had yeah. to do. Um, and Devin walked in and he was like, he looked at it and he was like, well, we can shoot it in a way where, you know, we can have it all be lit naturally. Um, and it can kind of feel like it, it would when like a kid was just going to go see his grandma after school, but then also have that mirrored, you know, when he's sort of seeing her um, at the end of her life uh, and we can kind of uh, have that all work really well. Um, and the light can be on them when they're taking the piano lesson, but behind them. And it was, he's, he's a, trem a tremendous collaborator that we've really enjoyed working with. Um, and, and Kimmy was, is a wonderful, uh, like wonderful producer in terms of notes uh, in the, in the writing process and notes during the edit. Um, but also she's, she has more experience and frankly, more talent working with, with kids and actors in general than I do as an actress herself. Um, so there, especially with um, our child actor, he's wonderful, but it was his first shoot. So um, I don't think it occurred to him, and despite having been described it, that it was going to involve more than one take. Mm. that his first take on everything was not going to be perfect and that also the camera would move and he would have to do it again so uh kimmy's a, a wonderful director in terms of working with actors and turns out tremendous performances and thank goodness she was there <laughs> i don't know that i would have gotten the performances that i did uh if she hadn't been there uh kimmy yes you want to yeah. hear a fun fact ross sure the day uh after i wrapped my first feature film good on paper now on netflix I went the next day and ran film, I mean, ran sound for Matt. That's, <laughs> that's, that's great. I mean, that, it shows you have filmmaking in your blood. It's also true, true love. Yeah. <laughs> Lauren, Lauren Bancroft, who is, the direct, who is the producer of her film, this was, you know, 10 months earlier and she had just come off was she, did she help us on that too? We had someone who had PA'd or had been an assistant help us out and they did pretty good. Um, and, and Kimmy was in a musical comedy group with the uh, a live performance with Gwen's daughter. And so their trick was always to just get a big thing of Subway hoagies for their live shows for that, although they like performers could eat. So we just, we just did that. That was like, that was lunch every day. Um, and thankfully, like it was a small enough cast and crew that everyone was cool with that. <laughs> Kimmy, um, with, with your film, Naval Gazer, it's a, it's a subject that I, I really responded to because I'm, I'm becoming more and more aware of how technology, people just uh, 
absorbed with just looking at their devices all the time. Now you go to dinner, the, the phone is right there. People are always like, was this a subject that you were constantly aware of or did this, how did this project come about creatively? You know, I've been contemplating on this topic for a long time. The first documentary film I ever made was called Nerdcore Rising. And a lot of the, the nerds, I'll say it, it, it was like 2005. So like YouTube had just come out and stuff like, a lot of the, the people who felt very lonely were found solace in their computers and with like forums and online chats. And it seemed like something that could help people reach out and not feel so lonely. And then as we've all like got devices and watches and phones and I mean, uh, computers and like watching two screens at once. Um, uh, Matt and I also, our biggest collaboration is our daughter Lottie. Um, and when she was very young, she was drawing a jellyfish and I was just like dazzled by this thing that she had done and figured out and called it a jellyfish. And I looked over to him and his dad and they were both just navel gazing at their phones. <laughs> and I was like, and then the film just like appeared in my brain um, after that. Cause I kind of saw the world going that way. Cause you look up at the street. If you just take it, if take the time walking down any city when you're um, like I'm in Atlanta right now and I'm visiting and you look around and everyone's looking down and yeah. like, I just kind of saw the world of like, okay, so what if the world was suddenly like, you know, waist down is all we cared about anymore. And, and like, what, what does that mean? And the only, and just kind of like a Japanese game show, everything's just vying for your attention and just ticker yeah. tapes, and, you know, it, it kind of, you know, obviously things ebb and flow, but it does, it just, at this moment, it felt like it was calling to kind of call out our growing addiction to looking down. It, it might it might have something to do with the pandemic where people were isolated, they're on their devices more so too. Uh, there's, a, there's a photo that I recall, I'm not sure when it was taken, but I saw it recently where there's high school students in an art museum and they're just on their benches on their phone <laughs> And all this art is around them, and they're just oblivious to it. I, I'm laughing, but I'm also crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> laughing on the inside, crying on the inside. <laughs> I know. And you know, I like I, we. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk like you know, Instagram's ruining everything. With I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think it's just the forgetting to like you can capture memory. That's fine, but like. I think it's the, the um, I don't know, just for forgetting what's important and how to talk to people, I guess, or yeah. the interaction, the connectivity. And I, hopefully we, I mean, it seems like we're kind of coming out of this pandemic. And obviously I wrote this before the, the pandemic hit. And it, so it seems to really have resonated and kind of made me think about my nose and the phone all the time. Yeah, it's it's just it's not just social media. It's the emails and everything. It's it's everything is so instant. And if you don't feel you have to respond to something, people always ask you, "How come I just sent that? Why didn't you answer?" You know. Yeah. Yes, before instant gratification. You, yeah, before you were at, at a job, you answered your email after work or your mail after work. But now, as people want an answer immediately nowadays. Yeah, and and I have to say, uh, uh, ingenu ingenuity. Booty Studios did all the graphics and I was very excited to like do something that was so VFX heavy because very sci-fi and usually I deal much more with like relationship or you know um, female driven comedies and this was very much you know something new for me to do VFX and building that world because it really was a whole other world within the screen and the thing that we talked about a lot was just people just trying notifications people trying to just vie for your attention and like you know have you drank water today how many steps have you taken like yeah. this is your, this is your tape uh, your temperature you know there's a sale you've just walked by a dunkin donut since the, you get five percent off of a free cookie or <laughs> just the, 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 the targeted ads <laughs> what what are you working on next uh so right now i have a project that i'm doing with uh Absolutely Productions, which is Tim and Eric's production house. It's a, uh, it's actually online right now. It's called The Heron and the Hen. Um, and it's a van life, uh, hashtag van life uh, kind of spoof. Um, but, you know, sort of in the 
Spinal Tap mockumentary kind of vein. We're, we're aping the style of like a van life influencer. Um, and so that's a comedy and that's a return to form. And then I am, uh, I'm working on the, um, the script for a short film follow-up, like a, a comedy short film uh, to kind of do in the, the coming uh, festival season, de depending on when everything kind of lands, whatever the, whatever the, fo the, the following festival season is considered, I guess <laughs> it's uh, whenever you're done, that's when your festival season commences. So. True. Yeah. Um, <laughs> our, ours seem to be never ending is once we finish one, the next one starts. Um, sure. <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing the Lord's work, Ross. It's so hard. And yeah. like the festival that you put on is absolutely incredible. And it's the work that you do is so great and thoughtful. And we as filmmakers, Makers appreciate it so so much. Well, thank Absolutely. you. Thank you, um, Kimmy. Um, what are you working on next? Well, right now I'm in Atlanta working on a brand new freeform show called Single Drunk Female, um, and it's totally awesome. Uh, Jenny Connor is the EP of it from Girls, and uh, I have some more television coming up, which I'm very excited about. And Annie and I are working on, well, we have the feature version of Naval Gazers. We're gonna try to get that made. And then um, Allison from Control and I have a script called Girl World that's at Amazon right now. So uh, fingers crossed it gets made pretty okay. soon. Well, thank you so much for both of you for doing this. I hope um, you had fun. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you, you so much. much. It's great. It's lovely to see my husband. I'm I'm going to see him in a few days. <laughs> Normally, my daughter steals the phone and then sits it down to go watch like Nickelodeon, and is like, I'm like, where's, where's your mom? <laughs> well, 